Tuesday and the weather is gorgeous. It's actually been really nice the last few days. Um, it's been like in the 50s, 60s uh, around there and today it's a little higher. It's like 67. So, but yeah, for Florida that's perfect. That's perfect weather. So, um, hopefully I'll get a chance to get outside and enjoy it some. Uh, it has been a while since I've filmed anything, um, and I don't know, I just have had a lot going on and I haven't really been doing a whole lot because I've been having some health things and so really just spending a lot of time inside and um, I think I see a hawk over there. Sorry, I'm just a little distracted. But um, I do try to get outside every now and then, just a, a, like once every day, just even if it's just going out to the mailbox and coming back. Because being outside is probably my favorite thing in the whole world. Um, it really makes me feel better and just, yeah. I love being around trees and breathing fresh air and all of that, so. Um, but I did want to kind of explain a little bit of what's been going on just because um, I am going to be going back to the doctor today for some follow-up stuff um, and I haven't been really documenting or filming any of my other visits um, I guess because I've just been kind of unsure of whether or not I should I probably should have so it would make more sense at this point but I didn't so um, but basically, this this follow-up for today, um, this follow-up today is for a procedure, a procedure, I haven't drank anything yet today, so my mouth is so dry. Maybe I should do that before I start talking. Uh, but I've already started, so. Yes, yeah, so the procedures that I had done were, um, a hysteroscopy, I think that's what it's called, and a DNC, and... Um, basically, I've been having a lot of discomfort and pain, and I have been bleeding a lot for, um, a very long time, so, uh, there was just some concerns about that, and I've had, you know, pain for, for years and years, and the bleeding started, um, last year around, like, April, and it would I would have maybe like one week off a month and then it would start back up again so that's just a lot um, which made me very weak and tired and, um, and then I had a lot of other stomach problems going on which um, is a whole different thing for now um, but the DNC I'm going to go back and get the results from that I do know just preliminary results from that because based off of just what she saw when she was in there looking around and um, there was a polyp that she removed and there was a ton of tissue way more than what is normal um, and the uterus looked a little different than what is normal um, and the way she explained it to me was that normally a uterus is more pear-shaped and mine is more like a cylinder and it's smaller and she could only see one opening for or for a fallopian tube and not the other side so she is recommending that I get an MRI to see a little bit more about that but today I'm getting the results back for the tissue samples and the polyp um, biopsy so yeah that's kind of what's been going on and um, I've just been recovering from that um, surgery and um, not doing a whole lot of exercise but today I'm feeling really good and I think I'm gonna do some yoga because it's light and it's not super um, you know it, it doesn't it's not gonna affect too much so I'm excited about that just to get my body moving for the day and then later on today I will take you with me a little bit to get the results and stuff so um yeah anyway I hope you guys are doing good and I'm sorry I haven't been posting a whole lot lately um if you do see this and you want 
me to start filming anything specific. I am going to start doing more um, sit down sort of, you know, specific videos about specific things. So um, I was thinking of doing one about, you know, my favorites for 2017 or um, possibly what a couple things that I got for Christmas. Um, maybe what I eat in a day kind of thing or um, you know just lifestyle videos so if you are interested in anything specific that you might want to know just uh, leave it in the comments and and let me know and maybe I'll do a video on it so yeah I hope you guys are having a really good day and everything's going well and I will keep you up to date and see you soon <laughs> back in my car now the appointment went really well um, as far as all the tissue that she got out which she said was a lot uh, which is abnormal uh, none of it came back cancerous so that's a really good result it's kind of the main thing that we were worried about um, so that's really good and the only other there's well there's a couple of things um, Basically, it's it has to do with my ovulation and how that's not working really properly, and the uh, uterus itself is, could, based on what she saw, was smaller than normal, so it's building up um, a lot more tissue because I'm not releasing eggs every single time, and um, and there's not a lot of space so that's kind of the main thing and uh, so she's gonna send me for an MRI um, she put congenital uterine anomaly just to see um, if there's a malformation of the uterus so that's kind of where we're at right now um, and yeah so but I can't get that for a little while um, because it has to go through my insurance and um, I have to heal from the, the surgery that I had already and I have to finish my antibiotics that I'm on so um, so yeah that's kind of we're just in a waiting period for now and but that's really good so 
good news. And now I'm going to go to my mom's house and visit with her for a little bit before I head home. I forgot one thing she did say was that she wants me to go on the mini pill um, birth control. Um, I went on, I was on it for a while, but I didn't like the, it, it, I still got headaches a lot and that's why it's the mini pill and not a regular pill because I do get headaches and I especially get headaches when I'm on the pill. So, um, she took me off of that, but it also caused me a lot of like mood swings and, um, I just didn't feel right. So I don't love this idea, but that was one negative thing was that she thinks that it's important that I go on it again because, or at least try because, um, that could be why I'm not going through my full cycle. Um, and so because I'm not releasing eggs every time, I guess the whole process doesn't complete and that's why it's building up all this tissue. And so she wants me to go on the pill so that I, it will help force me through a full cycle and then clear out, keep continually clear out all of that tissue. Um, because the buildup is, is not good. So I, I don't know how I feel about that because I'm really not loving the idea. I don't like to be on medication anyway, um, but the pill itself in the past has not been my favorite experience. So I don't know. Um, I'm gonna go and look at some of my options, I guess, to determine, but she wanted me to start that almost, you know, right away um, when I start my next period. So. I don't know. I'm going to think on that, but I just wanted to share that because that was something that she recommended that I do um, really have any other solution to prevent that from happening right now. So, um, but yes, so I will see you later. <laughs>
Um, I was just making a video um, for my cookies that I was gonna, I'll put it up soon if it's not already up, I don't know. Um, but I was, while well, I was waiting for them to cook and cool, I thought I would talk a little bit more about the uh, procedure that I had done because I didn't really explain too much about it. Um, I kind of just skimmed over what was actually happening and like what the surgery actually was and all of that. So just wanted to give a little bit more information about that. Um, so what I had done was a, called a DNC, um, which is dilation and curatage. And basically what it is, is a surgical procedure where they go in and they dilate, open up the cervix and then uh, scrape out the tissue in the uterus. And in my case, I also had a polyp that had developed, so they removed that as well. And then they took the tissue and the polyp to, uh, for a biopsy and they sent it to the lab. Um, I also apologize because I'm getting a little bit of a cold, so um, my nose is running like crazy today. But, um, um, so I, my history is complicated and there's just way too much to go into in one video probably, but, um, I have a history of a lot of pain in my pelvis area, um, specifically on the left side, and it's been chronic for a very long time and um, it, it's really uncomfortable and it just, you know, more than the average person, I think. So, um, and I also have always had kind of a strange bleeding pattern and more specifically recently, um, I guess within the last eight months or so, I've been bleeding constantly and so, Originally, I was diagnosed, not diagnosed, but um, strongly suggested that I had endometriosis, which um, she still feels is a possibility and more, more than likely, but there's a separate surgery that you have to do in order to get like officially diagnosed for that. And um, I opted out of that surgery for this particular time around just because um, there was no real reason to, to know, I guess. Um, because for the test to do that, it's really only for diagnosis. And then from there, there's, you know, it's just so that you know. And it's kind of invasive and it's the recovery period's a lot longer than what I had done. And it's more recommended for someone who is planning on having children immediately following the surgery or trying for children because your likelihood of increasing your fertility is um goes up like within three months after the surgery so and I'm not at a place right now where that's um even possible for me right now so you know it just didn't make sense to do it but um so that's that's one of the things that's going on and but the surgery itself the one that I had the DNC and I also had um a hysteroscopy I believe it's called, but it's basically a scope that goes in and they take pictures of the uterus to determine um, whether or not it looks well and functional and correct, you know, the anatomy of it, which mine was abnormal. So I still have to get an MRI for that just to kind of delve deeper into that issue. But the DNC procedure itself, my experience with it was fine. Um, I'm actually really proud of myself because in any kind of medical situation, especially um, with more private areas, I get extremely anxious and it's very difficult uh, getting through those. Um, I always do and I, I'm, you know, it's, it's, I'm usually pretty good about working myself through them, but this particular time, I really didn't experience too much anxiety at all and I got through it with um you know no major issues at all so or no really issues at all so that was a positive experience for me personally 
and then also um, just the recovery and the surgery itself and everything. <clears throat> um, I would say in my for my experience it was easy and um, relatively painless. I mean it was painful afterwards for a couple of days and I did get an uh, infection which increased the pain for a couple for just for a couple more days beyond what the normal would be um, but generally speaking um, I recovered very well I'm still on antibiotics for that infection um, but it's it's I don't feel it anymore and the recovery was pretty quick considering everything so um, yeah I mean it's there's not a whole lot to, to say other than that that if, if you are going through that or you are about to go through that and just wondering you know how it went or what to expect or what the recovery would be like um, I'm sorry I keep looking over there but there's a bird outside my window and he's going crazy so uh, I was just watching him but I um, I want you to know that it's you know probably the most easy surgery that I can say that I've ever been through or known anybody else to go through you know it's pretty um, low-key and you just go in and they'll the worst thing I think for me was they pricked my hands like I still have bruises from them and this is like over a week later a week and a half almost um, and she couldn't find the veins in my hand so I have one on I have three punctures or four punctures on this hand and then she gave up and went over to the side and um, found one. I think she pricked me like twice on this side before she got it. So <laughs> that, I mean, and I'm not, um, I don't have any kind of adversity toward, um, getting pricked with a needle. That, it's never bothered me. I, I can give blood. I don't have a problem with that. So, but if that is an issue for you, that might cause some anxiety, but it's usually pretty quick. It, it was abnormal that it took her so long to find my veins, but um, I'd say that was probably the worst of the whole, um, like, beforehand procedure uh, experience, you know. But other than that, it was pretty smooth and it went well. Uh, and I had to wait. I had to be there at 7 in the morning, and then my surgery wasn't until 9.30, so I had to wait quite a while before I actually started. Um, so I would say if that's your case, just bring something to read or keep yourself preoccupied before the surgery because there's not a lot going on. It's not like they, you know, ask you too many questions and um, they have you change. They have you wear a robe, you know, like a hospital robe and... Um, they are, they're really nice. They give you, it, the one that I had, it actually had, it was connected to a tube and it kept you warm. You could adjust the temperature. You could be cooler or warmer on your own. Like you could uh, make sure it's to your liking. And then they also give you warmed up socks that are non-slip that you have to wear. And, you know, so I was pretty comfortable and, and eased. Um, and I have been under anesthesia before and my biggest, I guess, fear or concern or worry was that I was going to come out of it um, a total mess because last time that I went under and I came out, I came out and I was just like bawling and crying uncontrollably and just really upset and I, I couldn't figure it out and the doctors weren't really sure, um, you know, but... I have heard from other anesthesiologists that have talked to me about it is that it's, it's actually kind of common and it happens with people who typically are really anxious before they go under so that when they come out they're still like like what's going on and what's happening and like you know you're kind of not fully awake but kind of awake and so you're you know your body's just not feeling right and so for me that was like a shock and so I, cr I cried and cried and cried but this time for this surgery I didn't have that at all I came, woke up perfectly fine and so I was really happy about that I think I was more happy about that so nothing else really mattered to me at all so um but I came home the same day and then I just 
I was really sleepy, so I slept a lot. Um, I wasn't in pain for the first two days, um, like from the surgery, and then it like I had pain urinating, and um, every now and then I would get really bad cramps. Um, so because of the infection and everything, so. And that was that carried on for another two days after that probably so in all I was probably uncomfortable and in pain for about four days after the surgery but it wasn't so unbearable that I couldn't get up and walk around or um, do things in the house you know like I wouldn't want to like jump up and down or you know go running or ride a bike or something like that um, which my brother actually asked me to do at one point and I was like feeling like uh, bike riding right now but um so yeah that's kind of my experience and if you have any other questions just leave them in the comments or um yeah that's it I just wanted to share that in case anybody else is going through it or is more wondering where I've been for the last couple of weeks so yeah I guess I'll just talk to you about everything else later okay bye I'm gonna go eat some cookies